Trump, Trump. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. What an honor. You know, we set this thing up like 12 hours ago. This is amazing. And you know what? They have thousands of people out there, the most incredible people, and they can't. We got to get a bigger tent. Get a bigger tent. Well, I want to thank you. First of all, let's start by saying, leave Tom Brady alone. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. He's a great guy. It's enough. It's enough. All right. All right. Thank you very much. You know, this started like 12 hours ago. We said, I have to do this because we're going over. We're doing great in Pennsylvania. We're doing great in Maryland. I was in Maryland yesterday. We had 17,000 people, a, a massive crowd. And they were great. What a rally. In fact, I heard somebody today say nobody. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, that's very nice. Get them out. Get them out of here. Get them out. Oh, these people, where do they come from? Where do they come from? Get them out of here, please. Right there. All right, thank you. So this started, this, uh, yeah, don't hurt them, don't hurt them. We have to be very gentle. Got to be very gentle. All right. Where do these people come from? You know, in New York, we had some protesters, and they're all paid for. But we had some protesters, and we had these people. They're nice people. They had a couple of hundred. And the press, the media, most dishonest people in the world, the most. These are the most. These people are probably more dishonest than Lion Ted Cruz. That's a lot. That's a lot. But, you know, the press went up to him and they said to one woman, young woman, why are you here? Do you like Donald Trump? Actually, I do. She's holding a sign. It was manufactured, made in China, and she's holding a sign. Do you like Donald Trump? Why are you here? And they go, thank you. And they go, no, I do like him quite a bit. Well, why are you here? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> then they went to another one. What do you think of Donald Trump? I love him. And she's holding a sign. Trump equals hate. I'm not equal hate. I equal love. Believe me. We are going to change things around. And that's going to be good for everybody. That's going to be good for everybody. So what happened is we're in Maryland and in Pennsylvania. We went to Delaware. We're all over. And I said, what about Rhode Island? This was yesterday. What about Rhode Island? And these professionals that get paid a lot of money. They said, oh, no, that's okay. You're so popular up in Rhode Island. That's okay. All right, get him out. These are just professional agitators, folks. They're put in. It's the first time we've had it in many, many sessions, but they're put in there. They're just nothing but trouble. They're nothing but trouble. I actually, I actually believe that they do not love our country. I'll be honest with you. I really believe that. They don't love our country. So we said, what about Rhode Island? Oh, that's okay, Mr. Trump. You're doing so well in Rhode Island, you don't have to bother. I said, I'm bothering. Set it up. Set it up. And that was yesterday morning. And I'll tell you what, my team in Rhode Island has been so amazing. And I just want to thank everybody. The, the team, the team has been, the team has been so great. And I want to thank them.
folks, folks, don't even think about it. It will be built. Don't even think about it. Don't waste your breath. It will be built. Believe me. Believe me, it will be built and it'll go up fast and it'll be big and it'll be high and strong. And it's going to help stop the drugs from pouring into Rhode Island where you have a big problem. And everywhere else, including New Hampshire, which was my first big victory. And one woman came up to me and said, Mr. Trump, we have a terrible, terrible heroin problem in New Hampshire. And I look and I see the, it's like this, I look, I see the beautiful trees, the beautiful roadways, the beautiful everything, the lakes. I said, what do you mean heroin? They said, it's our single biggest problem. And then I realized it was as I got to know New Hampshire. And I said, if I win, we're going to stop this problem from poisoning our youth fast. And it's all coming from the same place, folks, okay? We're going to get it stopped. We're going to get it stopped. So I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things, and I do this. And you know, it's almost like I just, we just won New York, big, big, big league. And oh, did you see the news today? Did you see where they band together, where they collude? You know, it's collusion. You know, if you collude in business, if you collude in business or if you collude in the stock market, they put you in jail. But in politics, because it's a rigged system, because it's a corrupt enterprise, in politics, you're allowed to collude. So they colluded, and actually I was happy, because it shows how weak they are. It shows how pathetic they are. You know, I tweeted today, at real Donald Trump, I tweet. And that's, you know, it solves them. Don't worry, I'll give it up after I'm president. We won't tweet anymore, I don't think. Not presidential, but let me tell you, and I said, it takes two long-time politicians, right? Too long to beat, except they're way behind. If you add up the both votes and if you add up the both delegates, they're way behind me, so it doesn't matter. But it takes two guys, long-time politicians, to try and get together to try and beat Trump, and yet they're way behind. And I said to myself, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. And here's the key. I've only been doing this for 10 months. I haven't even been doing it very long. But, so I wanted to talk to you about one thing, then we'll get back to the other and we'll get back to it. But I loved it when I heard it. I heard it last night at 1130. I was called and they said, sir, Kasich, we call him one for 41. I thought it was 38. He's won one race in 41 states. One, okay, states and islands. So I call him now. I have a new nickname for him. One for 41. Very soon it's going to be one for 46 or 7. So he's going nowhere. And he keeps talking about how he does with Hillary Clinton. He hasn't had one negative ad yet. When they put in the first negative ad about him, he's going to collapse like a rock. You want, wait till you see this. Boom. Boom. You'll see. You will see. I will beat Hillary Clinton, crooked Hillary. I will beat her so badly, so badly. And Lion Ted Cruz cannot beat her. He has, he can't beat her. Hey, look, he got like no votes in New York. If you can't get any votes in New York, it's over, folks. He can't beat her. You look at his numbers in New Jersey. You look at his numbers all over the country. Lion Ted Cruz will lose so badly. To crooked Hillary, it'll be one of the great defeats ever. And Kasich will also, as soon as they start putting up the negative ads. All right, get them out. Get them out. Get them out. Is there any more, fo hey folks, folks, is there any better place to be than a Trump rally, right? Do we love it? I love it. Are you glad I came up to Rhode Island? Yeah. And by the way, I just saw coming up, a new poll came. We're actually over 60 
And I just found out, listen to this, listen. If we get 68, which was never meant to get because, you know, the whole system is so crazy. But if we get 68, we win everything. We win all the delegates. There's no shenanigans. And normally you wouldn't mention it, but we're so close. So if you can't, you got to get out tomorrow to vote. All right. I will not let you down. Believe me, I'm self-funding my campaign. These guys are all taking their money from special interests. Let me tell you, the politicians will never do the job because they're bought and paid for, folks. Just remember it. Just remember it. They're never going to do the job. They're never going to do the job. Uh, in many cases, they're incompetent. In some cases, they're outright stupid. And in many, many cases, they're controlled, they're competent, but they're controlled by the people that give them campaign financing and probably lots of other things, okay? So, so we are going to do the job. We're going to bring jobs back to Rhode Island. You look at what's happened. Look. And I'll be honest. Now, I've been doing this for eight or nine days where I'm going around New York State. I talk to Albany, Syracuse, Poughkeepsie, Beth Page. I mean, all over the place. And all over, it was. Um, I could use the same stats. The jobs have been ripped out of our country, folks. And if you look at a guy like Cruz, who wants TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, that's going to be, that is going to be worse, you watch, worse than NAFTA. Now you look at Kasich. I don't think he knows what, you know, did you see him? He has a news conference all the time when he's eating. I have never seen a human being eat in such a disgusting fashion. I'm always telling my young son, Baron, I'm saying, and I always with my kids, all of them, I'd say, children, small little bites, small. This guy takes a pancake and he's shoving in his mouth. He's like, it's disgusting. Do you want that for your president? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just honestly, it's disgusting. And then one of the things he said, you know, they make a deal. Politicians, they're no good for deals. So they make a deal at 11, 1130 last night. The deal is done. And this morning they talked to Kasich and he goes, you know, I'm going to Indiana. We're leading in Indiana. We have tremendous support in Indiana. It's a great place. Same thing happened, by the way. Jobs are being sucked out of there by Mexico and they're all moving to Mexico and other places. China's taking our business. But, you know, I look at it and I see Kasich. You know what he approved? NAFTA. He was one of the big pushes of NAFTA, which destroyed New England, destroyed Rhode Island and destroyed big sections of our country because NAFTA was a disaster. Now he wants Trans-Pacific Partnership which is a group of countries that's going to do a number on our country like you've never seen before. You can't let it happen. Now, Cruz, Cruz doesn't want to stop China from devaluing its currency and monetary manipulation. The single greatest tool that various countries are using to hurt the United States and our companies, okay? And if you want to let people go ahead and devalue, and if you want to let people get away with that, and Cruz is the leader of the pack, he is bad for this country, and he's bad for jobs and business, all right? Bad. Now, it's sort of funny. I watched Cruz this morning, and he's all mixed up because he's losing so badly. And when he's under pressure, he's like a basket case. So he's stuttering, and he's stammering. And I watched him, and he's saying, uh, I want jobs, and I want the economy, and I want this, and I want that. All stuff that I've been saying for years. And he just started saying it. He doesn't know anything about the economy. He doesn't know anything about jobs. He was a failed senator. He couldn't get anything passed, nothing. Look at his legislation. He got nothing passed, and now he wants to be. All he is is a guy that will go down and stand and filibuster for a day or two, and the other senators all look, when's he getting off the floor, Jim? The guy's a pain in the ass. When's he getting off the floor? You know, the senator that he most respects in the world is Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Great senator. And look at his early speeches. Everything was Jeff Sessions said and Jeff Sessions. Only one problem. Jeff Sessions, Senator Jeff Sessions, came out just recently and he endorsed Donald Trump. Okay. Little interesting. So... 
I think the fact that they colluded, I think the fact that they got together, the two of these guys, number one, it shows that they are just getting killed. You know, I laugh, especially with Cruz, because, look, Kasich is going nowhere. Again, remember Kasich. You know, I have a new nickname for him. One for 41. One. It was one for 38, but then they actually said, no, it's actually 41 states. And I would have won Ohio if I had two more days to campaign there. I came very close, would have won Ohio, but I had to stay in Florida, and I won Florida in a big, big landslide. But you know the story. We were given a dirty poll, and I was leading Florida by a lot. And then all of a sudden, two days, I was going up to Ohio. I was going all over Ohio. Then I got a dirty poll, I believe, from NBC, okay? I wouldn't say that. And they were partners with the Wall Street Journal. So who knows if it was dirty or not. But it was all, all of a sudden, I dropped from leading like 16 or 17. I went down to six, I said, in Florida. I said, I have to stay here. I can't take a chance. This is bad. Then we had the election. I won in a landslide. I wish I could have gone two days up to Ohio. We would have won. He would be 0 for 44. And what is he doing? What is he doing? Really? He's just a stubborn guy. That's all he is. He's a stubborn guy. He's like if you have a child, he just says... I want it, mommy. I don't care, mommy. I want it, daddy. I don't care. I want it. That's all he is. Because let me tell you something. Chris Christie, Chris Christie, who endorsed me, was doing much better than Kasich. Think of this. Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, a tremendous guy who endorsed me, was doing much better than Kasich. Marco Rubio, a very good guy, I have to tell you, he, Marco Rubio, who is, has many more delegates right now than Kasich, and he's been running a much, he did much better than Kasich. And you had numerous other people that were doing better than Kasich, or would have, if they said, I'm not getting out, I don't care, I don't care. You ever see it? He's eating today, stuffing it, I never saw bites this big he's pushing it in with his i never saw a guy eat like this i told my son he was watching he said daddy look i said don't watch little bites little bites and he's up there and honestly it shows such total weakness and it's pathetic when two long-time insider politicians establishment guys whether you like it or not have to collude, have to get together to try and beat a guy that really speaks what the people want. We want our jobs back. We want our military strong. We want our borders because otherwise we don't have a country and we're going to have the wall. But we want our borders back. We want to end the Common Core. We're going to end it and bring education locally. We're going to repeal and replace the horrible Obamacare, which is a disaster. We're going to save our Second Amendment, which is under siege. Under siege. And that's what we want, folks. You know, no great secrets. We want to make great trade deals. We can't have trade deals where China this year has a trade. You look at the imbalance between China, Japan, Mexico, and us. It's like we're a bunch of babies. Like we're a bunch of stupid, stupid babies. But we're not the babies. Our leadership has no clue. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. And it can be ended so easily. It can be ended so easily. We have trade deficit, a trade deficit with China, $505 billion. This has been going on for years with Mexico, $58 billion. That's why they pay for the wall. Number one, they used to say, oh, they won't build a wall. Even the guys on stage when I debated. By the way, I've been center stage for every single debate. I beat everybody, according to the polls. According to the debate polls, I beat every single person on the debate, every single debate, according to Drudge, who's a phenomenal guy, by the way. According to Drudge, according to Time Magazine, according to Slate, according to everyone. They have like six, seven of them every time there's a debate. You know, I think because of me, now they have a poll for everything. You know, I'm poll-oriented, okay? But every single debate. Then I heard this guy, Cruz, you know, he's getting killed. He's, he's getting killed. 
I mean, he got so badly beaten last week, and he's getting killed generally. In fact, I have to tell you, I don't think he's going to come in second anywhere. He's now in third place. But I heard Cruz say this. I want to debate Donald Trump. Donald Trump is afraid to debate me. He's afraid. You know, with the hands running. Oh, yeah, yeah. So dramatic. So dramatic. You know the truth? I heard he was a good debater in college. And you know what? He might be. But in college, they don't interrupt you every 15 words like I do with him. Okay? But you know what? He's saying, we want to debate. Donald Trump is afraid to debate. You know, the flourish and everything. Else. And here's what happened. We do need Trump. Thank you, honey. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rhode Island. Thank you. Hey, now I'm glad I came up to Rhode Island, right? You know? No, but I had a friend. I have to tell you this, though. Before we get back to his debate, because he's, I don't think he's a good debater, if you want to know the truth. But, but let me just tell you. So I have friends in Rhode Island. So they were calling me, though. They were saying, when are you coming up? Well, I don't know. I guess, you know, I have schedulers. They call it up. So I'm all over Pennsylvania. I'm all over every place. Maryland, all over. Went to Delaware. It was an amazing trip. Went everywhere. And he said, well, when are you coming up? I said, I love Rhode Island. I got to come. So I said, well, we're not scheduled. This was two days ago. I said, what do you mean you're not scheduled? Well, it's not that big a state. I said, but it's my people. These are great people. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Now, Cruz was coming up. You know what happened. Cruz was coming up and he canceled. Remember that he canceled. He was coming up two days ago. He canceled his trip to Rhode Island. So I not only didn't cancel, I said, I don't care what your schedule says. I don't care. Oh, youth. Look at that beautiful baby. I love to hear babies cry a little bit. It's fine. It's good. But let, let me just tell you. I said, I don't care what our schedule is. I couldn't care less. We're going to Rhode Island. So they put it in. Now I got to make two or three of these suckers. So let's see how I feel now at the end of the day. It won't be good because we're going right now. Pennsylvania, same thing. We have massive crowds, massive rallies, same thing. And honestly, I want to thank all of those people because when the car drove up, you people are all in here nice and comfortable. But when the car drew up, there were thousands of people on the road with Trump signs. And we love Trump. And just get the word out there. Get the word out there. And I am so happy that I came. I'm so, I have so many friends up here. One of the most beautiful places on earth. But we're going to straighten it out. We're going to bring your jobs back. We're going to get rid of your cocaine problems and your other problems. We're going to get rid of them. They're poisoning our youth. They're poisoning. So on the debate, I saw, I saw Cruz going, I want to debate. I want to debate. First of all, honestly, you know, when you're like 35 points up, debating's never a great thing, even if you do kill him in the debates, right? You know, normally speaking, when you have a lead of 31, 31 points, which is unheard of, actually, you don't say, oh, let's debate, let's debate. But I won every single debate. We debated 11 times. Every single debate. And by the way, he wasn't even coming in second and third most of the times. So now he goes, Donald Trump won't debate. Honestly, folks, let's not waste our time. You know what we're going to be doing. And I also say this. How many times can you have the same people asking the same questions to the candidates? I mean, you know, at some point you get. So here's the story. Here's the story. We are going to bring jobs back to this country and Rhode Island, this country. We are going to make great trade deals. The smartest people, Carl Icahn, the greatest business people in the world have endorsed me. We use political hacks to make the biggest deals in the world. You know, big trade deals are far bigger than any company. You know, company deals are like little deals, no matter how big they are. Trade deals are really massive deals. We use political hacks, people with political connections, people that probably sell us out because they probably have interests in companies because sometimes you wonder how could they make such bad deals they must be selling us out they can't be that stupid anyway we got the smartest i know the smartest i know the best i know the best negotiators i know the ones that are overrated i know the ones you never heard of that are better than all of them but we're going to use our best people you know when china comes into debate when mexico which kills us at the border and kills us on trade when mexico comes in and they want to negotiate a trade deal. They're using guys that are sharp. They're using killers with a lot of street smarts. 
When China comes in, all killers. They use killers. They use the small, and they come in waves. They don't send one guy in, oh, let's sit down and talk. You'll have 15, 20 guys. So if a guy makes a mistake, and then another one, they catch it. They catch it. And we'll have a guy sitting there who's a political hack. No more, folks. We're going to have the smartest in the world. We're going to bring our jobs back. We're not going to let devaluation happen. We're not going to let them continue to devalue their currency so that we're all a bunch of dopes. We're not going to let it happen anymore. Thank you. Thank you. And I tell the story because I'm going to Indiana right after the election tomorrow. We're going to, which is a great state where I have a lot of, a lot of support. I'm going to get Bobby Knight, I hope. I would love to get Bobby Knight, the great basketball coach from Indiana. But you know what? You know what? He's an amazing guy. But you know what? I'm going to Indiana. They have a company in Indiana called Carrier. I buy Carrier air conditioners. I'm not buying anymore. They just announced they fired 1,400 people rather viciously. And they announced they're moving from Indianapolis. They're moving from Indianapolis to Mexico. Now, when these countries do this, you know, our politicians, our incompetent politicians have been talking about this problem now for seven years. Seven years. Exactly. So they talk about it. For seven years, they haven't done anything. They're talking about we have to create incentives. We have to do that. By the way, I'm lowering taxes more than any other candidate. Everyone's going to be very happy. We're the highest tax nation in the world. But even that, even that, so it's not enough. So what happens is they say, well, we're going to give incentives. They've been talking for years. We're going to do this. Well, nice, complicated stuff that nobody's going to understand. Nobody cares. Here's what's going to happen. When a company moves out from our land, they move from Rhode Island. They move from Indiana. They move from Pennsylvania, which is getting hit hard, really hard. The steel industry, the coal industry. And by the way, the coal industry in West Virginia, in Pennsylvania, in Ohio, it's devastated. And you know who's using our coal? China's using our coal, folks. All right. China. We're going to open up our industries again. We're going to get rid of these ridiculous rules and regulation. We want clean air. We want clean water. Very important. OK. But we're going to open up our industry. We're going to bring back our steel industry. We're getting dumped. And, you know, nobody ever says, this is what they say. They say, well, the steel will cost more. They don't say, though, and I always say, make sure you say this. Make sure you say, yeah, the product might cost more. For instance, I want Apple to build their product in the United States, okay? That's going to be a big sign. They'll say, what will it cost more? I say, yeah, but we'll also have thousands and thousands and thousands of more jobs. So that's good. Make sure you say that. The media never reports the second part of the equation, okay? They never report. So, and nobody knows this stuff better than me. So here's what happens. When Carrier moves to Mexico, when Ford moves to Mexico, when Nabisco leaves Chicago and they move their big, big monster plant to Mexico, here's what happens. We tell the folks, listen, if you move to Mexico, we wish, wish you a lot of luck. It's hot. It's this. It's that. Enjoy yourself. But you know what? And the Mexicans are great people. Thousands work for me. They're phenomenal people. They're great. But their leaders are too smart for our leaders. That's the problem. Because I believe in free trade, but only when we have the right people. So here's what happens. There have to be consequences. We're going to build a wall. There have to be consequences. So here's what I do. I tell, and I'd like, I want to do it myself. It's so easy. I love doing it. I, I don't take vacations like Obama his whole life. The guy takes a six-month vacation twice a year. It's terrible. So here's what we do. Here's what we do. You know, he flies that big 747 to, wants to play around the golf. He flies it to Hawaii. Then he flies it back. And then he says the carbon footprint is being destroyed. I mean, give me a minute. So here's the story. Folks, here's the story. There have to be consequences. When Carrier leaves, Nabisco, hundreds and hundreds of Ford, the consequence is this. Now, ideally, you do it before they build their plant and everything. But you tell them, it's fine if you leave. I just want you to know that if you leave Rhode Island, if you leave Indiana, if you leave Pennsylvania, if you leave Maryland, where they're being hit very hard, if you leave any of these states, Delaware gets hit hard. You leave any of these, you leave anywhere in our country, that's fine. We wish you luck. Except here's the problem. Every time you build a unit, whether it's a car, an air conditioning unit, whatever it may be that they make and they sell, and you think you're going to come across our border, which will now be very strong borders. By the way, 1,600, think of this, 
Actually, 16,500 Border Patrol people endorsed me two weeks ago. They've never done that before. They've never endorsed. They've never endorsed. 16,500. Sheriff Joe Arpaio from Arizona, the toughest on the border. Sheriff Joe, a great guy, he endorsed me. Now you know, when Sheriff Joe endorses me, you know who the tough one on the border is. And we're not going to be, we're going to be fair. We're not going to be tough. We're going to be fair. We're going to be smart. And we want people to come into our country, but they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. And they'll come in legally. We want that. Okay. So here's what happens. We tell these companies before they leave, you're going to have a 35% tax every time you make a vehicle, every time you make a unit. Every, and you know what's going to happen? They're going to call me, and I didn't take their money, so I couldn't care less. All these other guys, Cruz and Kasich. I mean, look at Kasich. Kasich's going around begging people for money. He's like a beggar. He's begging. He's going around, please, can I have money? I want to continue onward, even though I'm one for 43, I think it is. Please, please, I'm going to win because, folks, we're going to get it. I'm, all, I'm not playing for the second, the third, the fourth. You know, you hear all this crap about delegates. It's a fixed system. It's a rigged system. It's disgusting. But we're like, listen to this. We're like the boxer. He goes into unfriendly territory. The champ. I said, well, champ, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you going there? I said, you're going to lose if it goes to a vote. I said, it's not going to a vote. We're going to knock him out. Knockout is first ballot, okay? We're going to go in the first ballot. That's what we count on. No, that's what we count on. So Cruz has all of these uh, bloodsuckers going around trying to get second ballot, fourth ballot, ninth ballot. Honestly, now, okay, assuming it ever did get to the second or third ballot, how do you let a guy run? I'm just saying, you know, because the, the system is crooked and it's rigged. But let's assume it's not going to. We're going to make it in the first ballot based on everything we see. But let's assume it goes to the second. So how do you give a guy who's millions of votes behind Trump, who's five or six hundred delegates behind Trump? Because if I don't make it, it's me by like a little tiny bit. Right. And we'll make it. But how do you give a guy on the second, third, or fourth ballot the nomination when he failed in New York where everybody laughed at him, where he can't get any votes, where he's expected to come in third in virtually every contest this on Tuesday, and some of those contests Kasich has actually given up. How do you give it to him? And you can't give it to Kasich because you can't give it to a guy that by that time will be one in 50 or something. Okay? He'll be one in 50. Ladies and gentlemen, our new nominee is John Kasich. He's won one state out of, out of 50. And he's going to be, how do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do it? So you can't give it to Kasich. Remember, he doesn't have one negative ad against him. As soon as they put the first ad out, he will collapse like a rock. Believe me, just remember that. So how do you give it to these people? So here's the story, folks. Here's the story. It's so important. We have a movement going on. Bill O'Reilly, the other night, who's a tough guy, but a smart guy, and other people have said, and Bill said, and he's not friends, or he's tough. There, a lot of people say, don't do, he's too tough. But I don't mind doing, because he's tough, but he's fair. But he said the other night, in his lifetime, what has happened to Donald Trump politically, is the most important event that he has ever witnessed in his lifetime. Now, he's not talking about me. He's talking about you. I mean, look at this crowd. Look at this crowd. Look at this crowd. Thank you. Look at this crowd and then add the Probably four or five times the number of people in this room. You guys are good at real estate. Anybody in real estate? You're very good. You know about real estate. But then you add all of the, the thousands of people that are out there running after the car with love in their hearts. We have love in our hearts. This is why we're on the cover of Time magazine many, many times. Many, many times over the last short period of time. Because they're talking about a movement, the likes of which, and they say it, our country has never seen before. Think of this. The Republican Party was getting very stale. Let's face it. Romney failed. Romney failed, unfortunately, but he failed and it didn't work. And here's what's happened to the Republican Party in the world. The Republican Party has gone from sort of stayed and stale and going nowhere in terms of presidential. 
to being the hottest party right now anywhere in the world. We're up almost 70 percent. 70 percent. People, people have said, like in Nevada, they had lines where it used to be, you know, you'd look at the voting booths, you have people, they worked there for years, and you'd see like two people in this massive room, and they'd have, a, you'd see two. In Nevada, which we won also, we won South Carolina, we won the South, Cruz was supposed to win the South. He's got a bad organization, but honestly, he's got, he's a bad messenger. I'm a much better messenger, believe me. South. Cruz was supposed to win the South. He's got a bad organization, but honestly, he's got he's a bad messenger. I'm a much better messenger, believe me. He's got a bad messenger, and he's a bad messenger. But look, remember, he was going to win South Carolina. He had weak on the border Nikki Haley. She's very weak on borders. And he thought that was a good thing. It turned out I had the lieutenant governor. That was much better. And I won in a landslide. I won the evangelicals. I won the women. I won every single group. Then we went... We went to Nevada. I won Nevada in a landslide. And by the way, the polls going at the exit polls, they did exit polls of Hispanics. I won the Hispanics. We're going to win the Hispanics. And we're going to win the African Americans because I'm going to bring jobs back to this country. We need jobs. We're going to win. Why? You think Hillary Clinton is going to bring jobs back? Hillary Clinton will not bring jobs back. That I can tell you. Hillary Clinton... Hillary Clinton doesn't have Hillary Clinton doesn't have a clue when it comes to what we're talking about. And by the way, she's controlled by all of the people that don't want the jobs to come back. Okay, she's controlled, and she's controlled by the open border people, folks. She wants open borders. She wants people to flood in. You know what they just did in the state of Virginia? Two hundred thousand people that were in prison for horrible crimes. For horrible crimes are being given the right to vote for the first time. That's crooked politics, because Virginia is a very close state. I would win Virginia. I have a lot of employees, a tremendous amount of property in Virginia. They're giving 200,000 people that have been convicted of heinous crimes, horrible crimes, the worst crimes, the right to vote. Because you know what? They know they're going to vote Democrat. They're going to vote Democrat, and that could be the swing. That's how disgusting and dishonest our political system is, all right? It's dishonest. Okay, you ready? So here's the story, folks. You're going to go and you're going to vote, and you're going to remember this very warm morning of this tent that should have been bigger, but they ran out of... No, no, they ran out of land. The hotel man told me, where's my hotel man? He's a great guy. Where the hell is he? He owns a hotel. Where is he? He's like central casting for ownership of a hotel. He said, Mr. Trump, I've owned this hotel for many years. This is by far the biggest crowd we've ever had. We've never had anything like that. Nice. Right? Nice. Oh, by the way, my son, Eric, come here. Eric. Come here. Come here. Come here. Say something. Are we not proud of this man? He has been such an amazing father, and it's just an honor to be here today. We love you, Rhode Island. My children, I mean, they'll always be children to me. I don't care, right? But my children have been so amazing. Ivanka, Don, Eric, Tiffany, Baron will be. He's a little on the young side right now. But we've had, we've had a great time. So here's what's going to happen. I want to thank Eric, because now we're going over to Pennsylvania together. He's going to spend the day. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to remember this afternoon. You're going to remember the fun we had, even though the subject is bad. The subject is how we're doing. And I didn't even want to read it because it's too depressing. But I didn't read it. But listen, listen. According to the United States Bureau of Labor Statistics, Rhode Island has lost 60% of its manufacturing jobs since 1990. The Warwick region of the state, we love Warwick, right? Has lost, has lost, yeah, I know, but don't let this happen. 44% of its manufacturing jobs since 2001. That's when China joined the World Trade Organization. Oh, isn't that a surprise, right? 
There are 20,000 fewer people in the workforce in Rhode Island today than in 2006. That's pretty close, right? The number of people on food stamps has increased 150 percent. Now, here's one I don't like. Syrian refugees are now being resettled in Rhode Island. We don't know where they're from. We don't know where they're from. They have no documentation. We all have hearts, and we can build safe zones in Syria, and we'll get the Gulf states to put up the money. We're not putting up the money, but I'll get that done. But you know what? We can't let this happen, but you have a lot of them resettling in Rhode Island. Just enjoy your, lock your doors, folks. Okay, lock your doors. No, it's a big problem. We don't know anything about them. We don't know where they come from, who they are. There's no documentation. We have our incompetent government people letting them in by the thousands. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe it's ISIS. You see what happens with two people that became radicalized in California where they shot and killed all their co-workers. Okay? Not with me, folks. It's not happening with me. Okay? So here, here's what's, here's what's going to happen. We don't. We don't win. Our country doesn't win anymore. We don't win with our military. We can't beat ISIS. We're going to knock the hell out of them, folks, because we're going to build it bigger and better and stronger. We don't win for our vets because our vets are not being properly taken care of, and they will be if I'm elected president. But we're going to start winning again. We're going to win with our military. We're going to win for our vets. We're going to win in education. We're going to have our local education. It's going to be a beautiful thing to watch. We're going to win with health care. We're going to win at the borders, and we're going to win with trade. We're going to win so much. Actually, some of you may get tired of winning. You may say, please, please, we can't take it anymore, Mr. President. Please, please don't win anymore, Mr. President. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm sorry. We're going to keep winning. We're going to make up for lost time. And we are going to make America great again.